to have you here, Jake. Um, welcome to my show. A pleasure. And yeah, tell me about your type and your typing journey. How did it begin for you? Ah, well, so I am a double masculine, theoretically Ava DuVernay, exactly. Um, but that's double masculine, S-E-T-E, -E, uh, play, consume, blast, sleep, blast, number two, allegedly. Uh, some people say number one. Uh, so, anyway. um, but uh, yeah, so I suppose my, my typing journey began with, you know, I've always been interested in... Um, other people I could just constantly see you know from my youth how different I was from everybody I just felt like everyone like like I, I felt like I'm an alien you know and everyone else is what are they doing I don't know um so you know as I got older I discovered like oh Myers-Briggs and 16 personality whatever and of course at I I what I did was consume everything so I just started by reading all of the types and I'm like man this is so horoscopy um and that kind of thinking as I looked at different things led me to uh, OPS and it was like science data mm -hmm. aligned my ST perfectly oh I love it so um you know then I, you know, it it took me forever to get typed because uh literally not being able to send in the uh, submission at uh the right time and just always being late so literally uh ep problems <laughs> okay that's interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. i, I ha had something similar too actually uh i couldn't make the thing work i had the video and everything but mm -hmm. i didn't know how to you know update the thing and you, you have to send it very fast before everyone else gets to it you know, before when it was a little bit harder. So, yeah, I get you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's just how I ended up getting mm -hmm. uh, typed in, in this community. Yeah. Did you have, like, a guess for your, like, a self-type? Um. Yeah, so, like, originally, you know, not under, really not understanding the terms. I didn't understand the terms until, like, months after I was typed um and I'm always understanding them better but like I think one of my first random guesses was like T-I, N-I, uh, sleep, consume, uh, last, play last or something like that you know mm -hmm. uh, and I totally didn't understand sexuals at all so right. but yeah. you know but you saw uh, yourself as an info dom right away um I didn't even understand yeah uh energy i saw myself here's what what i knew for certain right and people ask me like oh what's the type that you definitely can't possibly be mm -hmm. and i said what i can't possibly be ever in any way is f-e-s-i you know uh blastly play consume last that is there's no way i am ej and si like those things like fe and si are such not what i am at all that is everything those functions do is is my body rebels against those things mm -hmm. on a uh on a deep level um so but you know i like i say like i thought it was like ti and i said i don't even know what that means you know i i yeah. it was just like something all i knew was thinking for sure definitely thinking and like it was funny because um like if i would take a a tester or, or something it would always be like oh i remember like the 16 personalities thing it's like oh thinking a hundred and um assertiveness a hundred and uh all my friends like i i'd have reoccurring problems in my life the tidal waves mm -hmm. tidal waves of people um getting offended at me <laughs> Ooh, interesting and, and yeah let's get into that <laughs> people running away disappearing out of my life because you know i just do the masculine te thing of oh i just destroy people logically mm -hmm. and um and like i i think that really it's funny the relationship between te and ti both sides think the other is so dumb mm -hmm. you know it's, it's like i feel i i really feel okay everyone's get offended whatever um because that's the te way right i really feel like ti anywhere 
It is dumb. You could be lead TI. It it drives me crazy because how can you think that you um have the right answer when mm. you you can't look at anything from anyone else's perspective? Interesting. You know, you can't have the right answer. You're dumb. Uh mm-hmm. but also that's how I am emotionally. Yeah. Exactly. I'm emotionally dumb, you know, and I and I accept that. Uh, cause it's like, even though people say I'm a very emotional person, um, because I, I am like way more in touch with my emotion now. I cry all the time. Um, uh, you know, whenever I give a talk, I'm like just crying. <laughs> so it's like, um, uh, I've tapped into the FI feminine FI. I'm moving myself all the time, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it's something, uh, but no, I would have the problems where my my masculine te monster somebody and they're just gone and then i'll be like oh i wonder what happened to that person no sleep processing i just move on um interesting just i want to pause you there like you're giving me so much information here and i'm like i want to unpack a few of these things stop me whenever um so let's just stop right there so you offend someone and they they disappear and you say what happened to that guy what happened to her or him or whoever mm-hmm. and sleep last you never process that so what if you guys happen to meet later like bump into each other how do you deal it with that like wouldn't happen more. i wouldn't would happen. never see someone again even by mistake like on the street or you know in the store or yeah. wherever mm-hmm. that wouldn't happen just disappear it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> out of mind out of sight yeah and and it's funny too because i know that there are people uh usually deciders right who mm-hmm. are like um in fact, it must be decider a decider thing to be like, wow, this person bothered me so much because like I know when I'm making plans with groups of people, people mm-hmm. will just if this person is there, I can't be there. You know, yeah, and, yeah right. Decider like, drama. So crazy. I'm like, what is wrong with you? But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, um, so I I imagine that people are doing that with me when that oh. when that happens. It's like they're like. I can't be anywhere with this guy. Uh, I have oh. to avoid this at all costs. I'm just gonna leave the congregation. I don't know. I don't know what they're yeah. doing. They're they're doing some weird decider nonsense instead of talking to me. Nobody will so, talk to me. <laughs> uh, so I was thinking about it from from the other end, like yeah. from your perspective. So say it would happen. Like say you would meet this person again by chance somewhere unplanned and the person would be okay with you know greeting you and talking to you like how would you act or react well here's the thing right i would never know that it happened i i had to guess about this because Mm. what would happen is somebody would be gone and i had to piece together that like it's, at some point after that, um, sometimes I think maybe the most obvious one, like shortly after that, one of my friends, you know, took me aside and said, hey, man, uh, you know, you really need to because he, he was there. And I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, you really need to like. um, Be nicer or something. I don't I don't remember what he <laughs> what he was like, mm-hmm. or it's like, oh people people get hurt by stuff and i was like okay you know <laughs> yeah you didn't really care like deeply care about it uh no and and is and and i remember oh it was so bad it was like uh he was telling me you know um people you know uh or yeah one of your friends told me to talk to you and and uh you know, because they're offended. And I was just like, oh, I hate those people. <laughs> <laughs> you just shut yeah. down? Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. It's like, um, not that I'm not going to do that. It's just like, 
I I truly it's it's so bad. It's like I feel like oh you you got your emotions hurt. You're weak and pathetic. Mm. It's like what? Why do you care? People have different opinions all the time, you know. And um, I was and what I was expecting, right? Like here's what will always happen. I'm expecting the person. Like I express myself, and then I want them to to give me the clap back and just say, ah, actually you're wrong, and here's why. I'm expecting oh. the team response mm-hmm. you know of, oh okay you gave your opinion you're wrong I'm and let me correct you and I'd be like oh yeah yeah of course I'm wrong I don't know what I'm talking about and if they're thinking that I'm TI that I'm sharing my opinion and I'll never listen to anyone else ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then they already know that there's no point in doing that so they won't mm-hmm. even talk to me right yeah Yeah, that's so interesting how we collide with our functions, because I can really relate to that. Like, if you say something to me, I just automatically assume that it comes from your TI. Like, I have to yeah, consciously remind myself that that's not the case for everyone. So, yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to argue with someone if they have expressed who they are, you know, because that's essentially what you do if you share your logic if you come from the TI perspective. Yeah, and and it's really been a mind-blowing thing for me to accept and understand that like half the world literally will not listen to you ever. That like the TI just already knows what they're going to do and is never going to change. And there's nothing you can do except comfort them. And it's just so insane. It's like, I don't think I, that's I, true, Jake, because I don't think a TI never is going to change. That's not really true, because let's talk about identity. We were talking about this before the actual interview, um, because you have FI as your identity. So basically you are, if we say that we are our introverted functions, even if that's not how we operate in the world, but if that's what we are, then at the core you are NF, you are into intuition and feeling, like that's how you uh, feel about yourself or how you identify. And I'm this NT robot on the inside, NITI. So let's talk about identity and change because you just said that a TI will never change, but we talked about this before and we can that's change. The, I'm saying they're never gonna change because of me. I'm um, not going to logic them into realizing that they were wrong. Now I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. I I'm not you. saying people, I'm saying that that I can't reason with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, okay. Sorry, consume last <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, but, <laughs> but yeah, let's dive into the, to the FI and the TI, because this is actually the interesting part with the human, like their identity. Where do they come from and how does that like change over time? Because we can all change. And we were talking about that your FI is feminine and my TI is masculine. So there is some huge differences, uh, both in the modality and in the type of identity. So to this point in your life, give me a little bit of a recap of, you know, the overview of how would you describe your FI changing over time? Like say from teenage years till adulthood. Yeah. So um, it's, it's just like, if you're talking about my, yeah, my identity, it's, I, I just made a conscious effort to change who I was, you know, I, I thought about it and decided, okay, what kind of person would people want to be around and would uh, people want to have as a friend um, and would be encouraged and not built by and stuff like that. So I thought about those different qualities and I just said, okay, now what would that kind of a person do? What kind of behaviors would they exhibit in different situations? Um, And I uh, said, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. And so I just, every time I was incongruent with my idea, I just said, ah, I did it wrong. I need to change my behavior in the future. And so 
that continued, um, you know, and I became like, you know, a much happier, much more positive person. Um, and then even after all that, it was more and more changed to try and adapt to the, um, to the FETI axis, you know, where I'm trying to, oh, I have to be more emotionally available and, uh, and, uh, help communicate with people like that so it's like i just again i'm like oh i'm doing i'm doing everything perfectly is what i think like a couple years ago and it's like oh no um uh reoccurring problems again and so i have to adjust okay then how am i gonna have to act in these situations i think about that and then i'm like all right so i have to exhibit this kind of behavior and so that's who I'm going to be now. And it's fake it till you make it, right? You mm -hmm. just keep faking that you're this other person over and over and over again. And then eventually you're doing it subconsciously. And if you're doing the action subconsciously, what's the difference between that being actually who you are? Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So can you share some like examples of how you've navigated such situations, like doing these changes, like more in a concrete sense? Um, um sure. say for example in your like at home your everyday life interacting with your close ones how what would that look like for example so um it looks like uh just because you know i'm not continuously doing uh anything i don't experience you know real empathy at all but it's like when I recognize that someone's having an effie freak out, uh, like, oh, their emotions are going crazy and um, they need some comfort or whatever, then I will administer the comfort. I'm like, ah, oh, I, I, I have, I have the tool for this now. I, I whip out the, the effie and uh, try to directly adjust someone's chemicals. Um, and this, the ways, the main ways to do this that I found work for me is, um you know, actually touching someone because touching someone changes their chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and then also um, like paying a lot of attention to the ways that uh, I, you know, I, I realize like people, the feelers are paying so much attention to like the little, the little um, sounds that you make. And it's like the, Aww. or the, or the, yeah. Whatever mm -hmm. I think those things are so dumb, but I'm like, oh, it's time to whip out the that tool, and I gotta make these little sounds and make these weird facial expressions mm -hmm. um, to to reach the person's feelings, or I gotta uh, change their chemicals. Another way, I gotta give them something to drink, something to eat, something like that, um, to literally change their body uh, uh, chemicals. Um, and so then it's so funny to me because like. I'm thinking someone is having like, oh, uh, there, here's an example. Someone, oh, messes up something with the TV, starts losing their mind. Oh, I go up there. I just hug them for a, like a minute. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they're just like, okay, okay, okay. Thanks for helping. And it's, and See, to me, that I'm helps. <laughs> helping. The thing is still broken, but I, I have to respect that. Um, yeah, because actually what, what happens... <laughs> yeah, I'm just interrupting a little bit because actually what happens, like if someone would give me that hug, maybe I wouldn't like it. I don't know. But if it's like done in the exact right moment and I feel more calm afterwards, then I will be able to go solve my problem myself. Like... You're already halfway there. If you have calmed down, if you, you know, control the chemicals, now you can think and now you can solve the problem. So you actually did help the person to solve the problem themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. It's like they will never think of logic as the problem. It's only, it's the, the emotions, the problem that mm -hmm. I need someone else to help me with. And then it's like on the FI, it's like, my emotions are, ne you're, I'm never going to need your help, right? But it's a lie because if someone hugs me, it feels good too. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, good to know. <laughs> so, and it's, it's, it's like, it's a lie with the TI too. The lie that the TI is is, is saying that um, you can't help me with my logic, but yeah, yeah, I can. And everybody can. And uh, anyways, so I just, yeah. I just need people move me a little bit more in order to experience that. But like, that's what I'll do. 
And um, other people who I've like expressed my difficulty about this with, it's funny, um, you know, like the FEs that are like, they're having a freak out. I've, I've had them actually say, ah, uh, and I'm like, oh, do you, do you need me to fix it? And they say, can you comfort me real quick? And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, great. Man. Someone can put it in the ST and, and let you know, like, please come here, hug me. Like, yes. Yeah. You need to <laughs> so get that prompt. Yes. I'm like, man. And I'm like, ah, so now I'm recognizing more of those situations where it's like, okay, is this something where, uh, is this a person that I can, you know, use my saviors to solve or do I have to go into the shadow function uh, and emulate that? Um, and then when I recognize more so that, um, oh, this, oh, this is an FE person. I've got to, I've got to do this. Uh, so it's just about that recognition now. So it's like, can you give an example of that? Like, if you know, like, say, you know, you have an FE person in front of you, like, how would your actions with how would they be different to well say if you had a te person yeah no they it'd be it'd be totally different because if it was te and they're talking to me about their problems i'm just gonna talk to them about their problems mm -hmm. you know and I'll, I'll i'll make suggestions mm -hmm. what about this do you think this is a good idea um what if what if you tried this maybe you should do something like this so i'm like then i'll be getting into um nite blast Mm. and uh start offering um tips suggestions things like that that they can that they can do to help solve the problem and the te's are like great oh man that 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 is good i love it thanks for the suggestions i'll consider that because that's the t is just oh let me weigh all the suggestions and then i'll mm. figure out what i'm gonna do but if it's an fe i don't do any of that i just say i'm so sorry to hear that <laughs> and and then here's a hug let's go get something to eat, whatever, you know? And cause it's yeah. like, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. <laughs> I say we can do, but I'm, I'm doing the thing that I don't think is real. Yeah, exactly. Because it does help. Like you have no idea how much it helps when someone does that for, for someone. Like, as I said before, you... I am seeing it. It's yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Do you have an example where you've seen that? Like, I'd love to hear an example. Yeah, okay. So, um, I mean, how specific? Because, okay, yeah, like, uh, I was saying, like, like, the two two main things that come to mind are, like, um, you know, I, well, like, the time where I, uh, like I said, I just went and, and hugged someone who messed up their TV or something. Another time, like, somebody... Um, got their order wrong and the staff was arguing with them and they were really upset um so you know just go over there and and uh encourage them a little bit you know using fe rather than rather than te um but i mean there's there's a lot of different um scenarios where it happens but it, it's specifically um like <sighs> it's just those two moments that i'm that i'm thinking of but mm -hmm. um oh another one is uh let's see i was just you know having some some dinner with with uh with someone um and you know they're talking about their life and stuff and then they just you know start to break down and things like so it's like all right well let me get on the other side of the table and <laughs> get closer to you wow so, yeah the... that's that's a great move when when it's appropriate Hmm. It, that's the key thing it's all it's all about what's appropriate so yeah mm -hmm. yeah I guess that must be a tough one because even I can let you know that even as because I have savior fe but still sometimes I'm not sure when it is appropriate like can I do this now or can I not like it's it's hard to to gosh that even as an fe savior so I'm just wondering how do you do that um, I think that really, um, cause I'm definitely not thinking about what's appropriate. What is really happening is I have just continuously with everyone, I'm trying to make them understand, um, whether I'm doing it right or not, how much I love them and care about them and want what's best for them. 
Mm. Um, so then it's like, I feel like people are more receptive to me trying to help them in any way uh, when, when they understand that. And so if I'm just constantly, like everything about me that I, my interactions with them are, I'm trying to have your best interest. So then I feel like people are much more receptive and they won't think it's inappropriate um for most like pretty much anything i do but i'm just i'm not gonna do anything like okay i'm i'm a very weird person um by default but just trying to do things thousands of times you know mm. we have an interaction with somebody all the time you know you have a physical interaction um you know just oh let's shake hands or we'll well you know we'll bring in and and do that thing or uh something like that you know, or, or some people you'll just hug full on. Some people you do a side hug. Oh, you know what it is? It's, it's reflex is uh, reflecting, you know, it's like, what oh, are they yeah. doing to me? And then doing what, it back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what, what are they um kind of behaviors? Cause uh, I like, that's what I'm, I'm realizing is happening. It's, and I guess that's kind of essay, but um, it's. Yeah. Cause you're oh. reading the cues so you can use your essay to kind of guess what kind of FE would be needed. Yeah, and and it's, I wouldn't even say it's really like, re, I'm not reading into anything. It's just, I saw what you did mm -hmm. and I'm going to do that same thing. So if if it's the kind of person, and it's funny, um, I think the hardest things are when people don't, um, I, I've, I've run into this where it's like some people will how do I put this they don't give tells okay like like someone will will just be like standing there not moving at all and wanting you to hug them but they mm -hmm. won't move you know it's like that's what they want yeah and exactly. so I'll, like, I'll go for a handshake because that's safe right mm -hmm. it's like there's degrees of of intimacy with each motion uh and contact so it's like I'll do that and then they'll be like what get that out of there you know and just <laughs> okay <laughs> so i'm like okay wait wait yeah so i have to like kind of log that but some people just don't have they don't have uh those kind of fe tells like like wait how do you want to physically interact with me mm. um i don't know <laughs> so you just kind of have to extend yourself um a, in, in like a small way and usually they'll they'll uh, respond in the way that they prefer but right. i've also noticed that some people get offended when it's like, oh, why did you hug them and you shook my hand? Because you were standing there like a stick. That's why. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're actually letting them know. <laughs> uh, no, this is, this is, like, I can just, I'm, t I can tell that's what's happening. It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you, why don't you, uh, you know, start moving or something? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. It's fascinating to hear like the differences between our worlds, like, the, the functions and how we think differently um so you are a thinker and you are a sensor as well and uh, you're still doing very well uh, at least from the dis description uh when it comes to empathizing with others so that's great um i was thinking about when it comes to bridging to this gap between logical reasoning and emotions what steps do you take? So we are already talking about it to acknowledge and validate others' emotions. But I'm talking about when they clash, when they don't align with your own logical reasoning. Like how can you still interact and uh, validate their emotions when that is there is a clash there? So I think that, again, that's a... Um, for the TE, it doesn't matter whether... Um anyone agrees with the way <laughs> that I think it's um even if they are stupid it's okay to still be well it, it's okay if everyone's stupid it's because I'm thinking everyone's stupid I'm stupid everyone's stupid oh you're dumb oh that's okay so are we you know <laughs> it's, it's like I'm seeing okay if you're doing it differently you also think I'm dumb for doing it differently all right mm, that's the way I'm yeah, looking that's at that's a it. good yeah yeah, great. Thought. So it's and that's uh, I try to tell this to to like one of my friend. I was talking to him. He's lead TI, um, and and I was like, okay, do you realize how you're so okay with 
with always um it's it's you against like a whole room of people stop doing that <laughs> and uh you're looking at people and saying why are you shooting yourself in the face with your what are you what you're doing and it's like um can why don't you think the other end they probably think the same way about you mm -hmm. so so that's not uh, on the logical spectrum that's why it's not an issue as far as blending thinking and feeling like it really should be a cohesive arrangement right like the things that you think about should be emotionally stimulating for you and uh, the feelings that you have should you should have a good reason to feel them right is is what i'm thinking so when um i think about things uh i think about things that are you know beautiful and so it's it's like i'm focusing uh on something that you know is is really going to get me um stimulated so it's like okay like uh, i love to do math recreationally you know so mm. i'll just i'll just do it and that's but like i'm very excited and what I'll, I'll 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 be like crying all the time in the middle of the night because like i'll be reading the scriptures and i'm like putting everything together i'm like oh it's so beautiful and i just yeah i'm weeping but i just keep going so it's like um the things that like these those feelings are based in in logic and i suppose that's what uh the whole idea is of my feelings um as an fi i have reasons for them especially being savior savior to e that i like every everything that i feel i could totally express exactly why um mm -hmm. in the st very clearly i can express why i i love it so much or why i don't like it why why is it so weird i'll tell you um and and on the other side um I really love logic <laughs> and I guess that's what uh you know is being savior savior t is man what, you know what, what yeah, let me let me ask a question here like a follow-up follow yeah. question so if there suddenly is a feeling that doesn't make sense you know if if some feeling hits you and you don't know where it came from how how do you react to that like sometimes if that actually happens um i just try to analyze it like uh one time it was actually very recently after someone in the community said hey why don't you like next time you realize you're having a feeling um analyze it and figure out what it is uh and i think that you know because i'm a thinker i'm like pretty numb to feeling like i'll start recognizing a feeling once it gets to like an eight out of ten and maybe like lead feeling is like oh if it's a one i'm i'm mm, already like right oh. that's a good example yeah so um you know like as the time was approaching for my i didn't realize this was the correlation at the time but as the time was approaching for my type to be revealed i was getting this feeling of excitement and i was like what is that i don't even know what that is <laughs> and but but i like was thinking about it i'm like well it's not fear it is not um beauty uh I only have like I only have like nine emotions. I wrote them down. I named them. I was trying to be more decidery, but uh, anyways. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is this is um, it, it must be the anticipation because the day's approaching. So yeah, I just try and and like when I'm when I'm experiencing an emotion that I don't understand, which is extremely rare, extremely rare. Usually when I have a feeling, like I know exactly why. Um, but it's like, okay, what's why? And so I have to have a reason to have the emotion. So I just process that, I guess. That sounds a little contradictory to your type to be that aware of emotion. I think it's really interesting. So you're surprising uh, us in a sense, uh, at least if I compare to what I hear Damon Chan talking about. Yeah. Like, so what do you think have made you more aware of that? area of your life like connecting um, your emotions to reasons well you know it, it for me um i don't know if maybe um for i don't know if this is is just me if the other te's feel this way or if um you know 
or, or how exactly all the parts are working, I feel like my awareness was increased when somebody else told me, uh, in true TE fashion, someone else told me to pay attention to them and mm -hmm. and catalog them. And it was like, oh, okay. So I did that. Um, but as far as emotions being like, like what do emotions have to do with reasons? To me, they're intrinsically related. Um, it's because if you're if you're having let's just talk about like go full st here full science if sure. you're having a, a, emotions are let's say emotions are chemicals like like every t does mm -hmm. emotions are chemicals if you're having those chemicals there's a reason why you know and there there's a, there's probably actually a lot of reasons why um you know combinations of everything you ate everything you did your body's reaction to that based on its wiring um and then when you have you like your 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 default of where you're at emotionally and now you're different from that something influenced you it's it's you like you're not just going to change maybe you had an interesting thought and that thought uh, was i don't know triggering or maybe it was inspirational and it changes your your chemicals cuz you're like oh wow man i'm getting dopamine from my brain right now because that was such a great idea and so now your chemicals are adjusted or you think about someone you miss and it's like, oh man, that, that feeling is now hitting me of, uh, I'm longing to be with this person. And so your chemicals are changed or, you know, you just trip and hit your knee or something and you're like, ah, and now your chemicals are going crazy there. So it's, it's, uh, there's, I feel like there's gotta be a reason why for any emotion, now, I know that feelers don't think of it like that usually, and they just like have their feelings and they don't think there has to be an emotion uh, or a reason for it. Um, and I that's okay. Uh, I disagree. I actually disagree okay. as a feeler. I don't think okay. I, the first thing I do whenever I experience an emotion is to try and understand why, like that's the very first thing. And I'm not okay with just having a feeling without understanding it. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So... I know. I think that's super important. Like, like if you don't know why you're having the feel, like, how are you going to just have a feeling and then leave it unresolved? But I imagine that's what the deciders are doing. They're just like, I have these feelings. Anyways, let me go double observe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, but I because I imagine like um because the problems are coming from a lack of resolution, right? Mm. So if if you have a feeling and you don't know why you have that feeling, problems are gonna come in your life inevitably. Cause uh, an example of like learning the feeling, like let's say I'm having a feeling. Why am I feeling this way? Oh, I did this the other day. I was like, man, I'm having this feeling in response to this information. I feel like I'm missing out. I'm experiencing FOMO. And it's like, hmm, okay. If that's what's going, do I really want to um, improve my relationships with these people? Yes, I do. So you know what? Later on, I'm going to uh, plan, a I'm going to make a schedule for calling different ones. Mm. And there you go. Right, yeah. To I'll resolve. invite them to something I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking of it. Maybe in my own case, it's more about, um, especially, maybe especially when it's negative emotions. That's when I really need to address, like, the reason why. And uh, as you say, it's to resolve it. I think I'm more okay with having positive feelings without understanding exactly why. Or maybe I have a suspicion. I think, oh, maybe I, I know the reason, but... I don't have to confirm it. I don't have to do that deep diving. But if it's a negative emotion, I really do have to dissect it to its very core uh, so I can address it. Can you mm. relate to some of that? No, absolutely. Um, um, it's very rare, like I said, that I have an emotion I don't understand. But um, like if ever I do, emotions are really frustrating, I think, to um, thinkers because... Uh, like when I experience emotion, especially if I write, it's, um, well, maybe not even especially, but it's debilitating. Like, like I'll have extremely intense feelings 
where I'm unable to talk or move or do anything. And it's like, where did that come from? Um, and so I have to, I have to really think about and process, um, what's going on there. Um, but usually I know why it's usually the ransom. <laughs> it's usually, um, you know, some other beautiful thing like that, that is just, wow, here I am. I'm just standing here crying. Uh, you know, um, I went back to the kingdom hall. I was sick for weeks. I, I sat down and it was like, uh, then the scripture was came up about um oh yeah how how when the foundation of the temple was being laid uh the people were weeping and others were shouting tears of joy and i started crying i was like oh man that is how i feel right now being back in the house of god um mm -hmm. so but like usually i understand that it's like i'll have the feeling and it's like ah this is what caused me to have these emotions so um but if i because if you didn't know right then yeah, how... sometimes it will caught you off guard right yeah 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 it but it doesn't happen very often if it does i'll i'll stop and figure it out right there okay yeah interesting so how has that changed over time has that always been the case I think largely i've been previously unconscious as to my processes for um how i go about any of that um but i do know that uh interestingly enough i'm thinking of my my younger years a lot of my hatred was actually directed towards specific people mm. um you know and it's like like my bullies or, or something like that where um, did that come from like yeah bullies that that's very understandable so was it usually someone who had you know hurt you or offended you or could it be random or um well, they were just terrible people. Um, what do they you did to me, mean to no, you? They're just terrible in, people in general. In general, okay. Yeah, and and like, um, you know, like I would see them bullying other people, so I would hate them, or or it would be like, um, they would. Okay, I don't know if you can tell. I'm I'm actually uh you know a pretty tall guy. I'm six three. I was this tall when I was 13. So people didn't really, um, you know, try to hurt me physically. Mm -hmm. I would hurt them. Okay. On accident. <laughs> and so um, it was, it was, uh, but people would, would, you know, uh, make fun of me or, or, or something for who knows. I don't even know uh, what reason, but um, in any case, I could tell, oh, they have bad intent. So it's like, when I recognize bad intent, it's like, I just, I, I have negative feelings towards that person. Mm. Like your, your intent is to cause pain to somebody else. What's wrong with you? You know, um, why, why are you like that? So it's more like, I can't resolve other people's emotions is I guess um, what's really happening because I usually have an extremely good understanding of, of where my emotions are coming from. But then it's like when you're trying to deal with other people's emotions, I think like a lot of my uh, an enjoyment now is coming from I gave up on that. Understanding other people's emotions, especially when they're coming from TI, which doesn't make sense in the first place. Not to me. <laughs> it does <laughs> to me. <laughs> it, I, it makes sense to them. It makes perfect sense. I was like, why are you so upset? I know why. Okay. I can't even tell you because you won't get it and you'll say I'm wrong. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking of like from the TI like if you're having bad emotions in your TI, I can't tell you my logic because my logic won't make sense to you. And then you'll invalidate me because you think I'm wrong for having these emotions. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, but you are. No. Um... <laughs> but back to but... The, the, the tribe thing, I, I just want to analyze that a little bit. Like, so when you saw some people that didn't make sense to you they they seemed to be hateful or bullies or something like that and they were not necessarily being mean to you personally but they were just yeah bad people so to speak decider language uh, in general so it feels like what I'm trying to understand here is like that you're kind of defending the tribe without them 
even asking you to do it. Like, it's like you care. It seems like this is the DE aspect of you. Um, that you I believe. Do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, do you want to elaborate a little bit more? Like, what, how, what actions do you take? And how do you help? Because I can see you have masculine DE, right? So I can see that masculine DE can be very protective, like something that can make me feel safe. And uh, I've experienced that in my life. So yeah, can you, from your perspective, let me know like what happens in your mind when you see someone who needs protection or is it that at all? Is it just a thing about justice? This isn't how, how it's supposed to be or yeah what are um yeah. I, that's an interesting thing you're taking me really back to high school here um i think that uh i don't really know if it's i don't believe in people needing protection in a, in a very wrong way um this is how i feel right and of course i'm projecting because i don't need protection mm -hmm. it's it's probably true that people need protection um, but it's like, uh, really, I know how dangerous I literally am in the real world. So it's like, um, when, when I see people, um, doing bad things, uh, it's, it, I feel like it's just wrong, but I'm not obligated to save anybody. And, and I think that from the beginning, actually, I have felt that, if anything bad was happening to me, nobody was going to save me. I had to solve it myself. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm kind of projecting that onto other people where like, oh, you're having the problem. You're going to fight back, right? You're going to stop this, right? And it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you just sitting there? And then the lie that I'm telling myself is if they're sitting there and letting that happening to them, uh, letting that happen to them, it's their own fault, which isn't true either. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because maybe they are built like they're very small. Maybe they can't defend themselves, <laughs> for example. Terrible. And 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 that's, you know, so it's like, that's what I'm, I'm like, okay, you already know these guys are idiots. Why are you even here? Why are you, why are you around them? You're asking for this. Mm. It's dumb. <laughs> they should have NI, right? They should, you should have, have NI. What are you doing? <laughs> Didn't you see this coming? <laughs> right right okay yeah oh my god so you don't do it to protect the tribe uh now i do but it, it's it's i guess more learned because again i used to be so quiet um i used to be so like i didn't interact with people at all so um people would and i guess that's oh so so like i would the bullies would talk to me mm. trying to to get something out of me right um, and they would, uh, yeah, they would just be like, yeah, they would talk to me and just try to, try to get something. Cause that's what they do, right? They're like, how can I get a rise, um, out of, out of the, the tribe or something like, usually like mm. some kind of masculine DE, uh, something going on there. Um, so, but, um, I wasn't yet at the point in my life where I could talk to people. So usually people like just say stuff to me and I just stare at them. Mm -hmm. Um, uh so yeah there's there's that but like i i would defend myself if anybody you know tried to hurt me um i know at one point i did like get in the way of them doing stuff because it was happening right next to me i what was like happened? so what was the situation they were like they were like attacking this kid and so mm. i was just like you know mm, you the just... guy. Mm -hmm. and it was like i was just right there Okay. But then I just talked to the teacher. I, I don't want to have to deal with anything, right? So I just told the teacher, look, next time I'm not going to be so nice. Okay. We're going to have a problem. So what did you mean by that? I, I mean, I was going to hurt the kid, the bully. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's like, fix that. Okay. Mm, so you didn't actually take action the first time. You just went and told the teacher. No, I, I, well, <sighs> When it happened next to me, okay, I took action mm -hmm. to, to, I just removed, uh, you know, one of them. And then I went and told the teacher, look, 
Okay, this, you will do more than remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Fix that. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So tell us more about your journey. Like how has knowing the code, like knowing your functions, your modalities, has it helped you in any way, like to improve your life, to get more quality uh, of life? Uh, tremendously. Um, it, first of all, it gave me like uh, a way to to be self-aware because sleep lasts. I can't see my patterns at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like, it's very hard. And and I, even now, like I'm I, tracking is so bad. Like I can't even, I can't even write my work hours. It's like impossible. It's like what I do last week. I don't even know. Um, but what it, it gives me is like, okay, these are some blind spots that I need to, you know, work on and better address. Hmm. Uh, so it's like, how do I, um, how do I work on that? You know? And, and it helps me also really to see like, okay, what, what is this S I N E thing that people are doing? You know, what is this F E T I? Because I'm not doing any of that. And if there's like a whole side of the game that I'm not playing, I want to, I want to get in on that action. Um, because my goal is to be the best friend possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I want to continuously draw people to me, um, so that I can be a continuous source of encouragement and love. Um, and you know, just, just fill people with joy. And so right. what does that do for you? Like, because what I hear is that you are expand you're like extending your play to the other half of the playing field because now you know more about the code so you don't just know about your own functions but you know about the functions in general and you can understand other functions better so now you can extend and play on the, the entire field and you can just become friends with so many people and you can do that play all the time yeah, so yeah. I really I do my sabers more, okay? Right. Can I keep playing? <laughs> Wait a minute, I can't play with these people because they have uh, N NF play? Well, let's let's get in on that, you know? So it's uh, trying to, like you said, play the other end of the board. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, I didn't realize the ring was that big. I was killing it over here. Uh, how do I kill it everywhere? And right, um, right. so really it's been amazing to go on this journey of okay these recurring problems that i'm having in my life that's where they're coming from i'm not seeing what's coming i'm not tracking myself i'm not looking at my own known information um and then even beyond what's in my own set i'm not caring about the emotional needs of others I'm not organizing in the physical world. I'm not accepting that there's any possibility, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I need to go through and and really work on all, all those functions so that I can cover the board and not have something in the way of me being friends with somebody. Because oh, what I want to do is like, I'm, you know, like I'll, uh, some people we don't mesh with as easily. So I'll be with somebody and it's like, why are we not doing this? okay, can we do more of this, but it doesn't happen. We're just, and yeah. so um, I, with with the knowing the code, it's like, oh, are you one of these? Let me let me throw out um, some decider bait questions, see if that mm -hmm. gets you going. Mm -hmm. uh, let me do some, some uh, SI bait, you know, or, 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 let me do some uh, FE bait, okay? And then so you throw them out and it's like, oh, where are you going? Oh, let me do, let me try some TI that got you okay there we go mm -hmm. there we go you know and, and so, from yeah. there you can kind of play more effectively once yes. you have narrowed down on the type or the, the some functions mm -hmm. yeah so it's like i gotta see where the person's because in order to like build a relationship you have to have the interaction right so i have to see where a person is willing to put energy into the conversation mm. um so it's uh because yeah so when I try to go for functions that are not my own, it gives me a wider array of ways to have meaningful engagement with people. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just lets me play more. 
Right. So you you needed to understand the code and your own voids so you can do more and cover those voids so that you can do more of your savior, basically. Yeah. Ah, and how has that improved the quality of your play? Because that's basically what we're talking about. Yeah, well, now, like I'm saying, right, it's like, um, I don't really have any issues with anybody. And nobody really has any issues with me. Um, I feel like I can totally hang out with um, all kinds of different people. There's not really the same clashes that I've had um, anymore where I'm like, what's wrong with these people? It's like, instead of saying what's wrong with them, I know what's wrong with them. Mm. It's nothing wrong. They're they're playing with another set. They're playing exactly. with a different hand. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'll just say, okay, guess what? Now that I know that what hand you've got, we're going to play the game. Mm. Um, yeah. Or it's like, you know, hey, you're playing uh you're playing, you know, checkers and I'm playing part cheesy or whatever, but we're gonna we're gonna just get on the same game. Mm. And uh, so it, it lets me it lets me be uh more friends with people. Yeah. Okay. Let me process a little bit just. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, I think, that you are playing better. Are you having more fun? I guess because if you are playing a game that actually works, it's more fun because you're um, accommodating for other people doing the DE thing. And of course, or most likely they are enjoying it more now that you're playing their game. And yeah, so what's so in it for you? Is it like the connection is happening now or is it just that I win because I know how to do this or. <laughs> um, I, I guess both. Uh, I don't really believe in connection, um, but it's, it's really interesting uh, when, um, cause like my goal, right. Is to give people joy. So mm -hmm. I'm feeding off of their joy when I can get them to experience that joy. It's mm -hmm. like, I win. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah. You thought you were sad around me. Get get out of here. All right. You you now are happy. How do you like that? You don't have a choice. I won. And so it's like um uh when people it's so funny to me actually. Like when I'm doing uh something that's FE, FE seems so fake to me. Like but when I do it, it works. It's like all I had to do was that. Mm. It's pretty real estate. We'll we'll yeah. take that. <laughs> yeah yeah i guess i guess all the extroverted functions are fake in a sense because they are not connected to the true self you know it's it's funny that you say that i actually think that all the introverted functions are fake oh why because they have to do with you and not with reality mm. so yeah. it's like what i want to do is play in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized this, you know, like a month ago that I, I actually dislike introversion intensely, the very idea of it. Um, and I, so I, that's another thing I want to work on is mm -hmm. like, how can I be more introverted? Mm -hmm. um, but because I really, what I want to do is master FE and any, um, the emulation of those, at least I cannot, I can't really do them ever. But <laughs> if I can master the emulation of them, so I can just get like a passing grade, right? right. Then it'll be, it'll be it'll be enough. Um, so I'm as I'm trying to do, you know, more fe stuff. It it leads to oh, better relationships with people, and then um, if I do more any stuff, I'll be even better on the observing game. I'm trying to do more double observing, but you know, it's just it's, yeah, I, what, right. What, I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying. I'm failing. I gotta, I gotta do more, um, uh, more of that. Uh, but that's really the whole goal. The goal is if I can, if I can do, um, and eventually not even just do, but if I can somehow get to a point where I'm feeling other people's emotions, that would be amazing. If mm -hmm. I can do whatever any is doing, that would be amazing. Um, and then I can be like experiencing the whole extroverted spectrum um yeah. then i would have a much better grasp on what reality is and mm -hmm. 
this is just my opinion, but I feel like the introverted functions are best when, well, okay, I guess this is truth, I guess, in a sense. The introverted functions are best when they're filtered through the extroverted functions, and the extroverted functions are also best used when they have a subjective goal. So it's like when your introverted function is is using the extroverted function to achieve its subjective goal, that's really effective use. Targeted um, spectruming. But uh, so once I can understand the spectrums of, of reality, then I can be like, all right, let me hone in on my next goals, my future goals, you know. But right now, my goal is just maximize the joy of people that I'm with and um and just i want them to experience that and then make every effort to do the same mm. i want to become like a like a an infection that is forcing everyone to to be happy but okay uh, <laughs> like a, a positive pandemic that's right can, can we get a pandemic going okay cuz <laughs> i'm happy i love life all right can we yeah. get everyone it's so. very um, yeah it's uh, your enthusiasm is uh, rubbing off i'm starting to feel a little bit of it so yeah it works <laughs> whatever it is you're doing but i have two questions now tied to what you were saying and uh, one of them is about the um, introverted uh, aspect like how you're going to work on that being more introverted and the other one, I think I just forgot. So let's start with that one, and then I'll see if I get back to the second one. Okay. Um. So introversion, uh, is like in its basis form. This is the way I kind of understand it is, it's saying no. You know, it's like your 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 limiting options with um OI, or your your refusing um outside opinions with DI. So what that really would involve for me is fully developing an idea of what is my truth in TI and mm -hmm. what is good for me in FI. And um, and in the same way, it'd be like, okay, what is my end game in NI? And then how, uh, or, and what's my process in SI? So it's like, if I can figure out um, the answers to to those things, and, and right now there's just a hazy outline of it, but so um, yeah. what do you do like to be able to reach that point where you can reflect on these things? Like, do you go out for walks or like what actions do you take to actually be able to do a little bit of that sleep processing? So, um. Sleep is very difficult for me. Um, I I try to um, work on just one introversion at a time. Like, for example, um, with the FI, I've gotten myself into a habit. I've been and I was practicing this for a while. Just if I want something, just do it. Like if I want something, just take it. If it's not wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's something that I want, like, in a very simple sense, oh, it's the last slice of pizza. Y'all were too slow. Give it to me. You know, and it's, and it's like, on that sense, I'm just always taking the things that I want. And it's great when what you want is also good for others. Mm -hmm. But like, um, so it needs a little bit of alignment there. But like, that's how I've been like trying to work on my FI. <clears throat> I, I, and I'm like realizing that I'm like, why am I not doing that? Am I telling myself I'm not allowed, even though nobody said that? Give it to me, you know? And mm. and then, like, if I work on the NI, I have to say, okay, you know what? I don't need the data. Um, how does this work? How do I think it works? Let's start there and let me make a guess. And so I'll like have to um, make uh, an explicit guess and say, I think that this is where this is going. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've just been trying to like practice them individually rather than, um, doing them together. Um, but I feel like I've been able to, um, do them together sometimes when, uh, like I'm trying to do my meditation on the scriptures. 
So what I'll do is I will, instead of, um, and it really helped me, an article that came out about discernment, it said discernment is like oh, connecting different things too, to see how they're related. So I'll take like one thought and I'll say, all right, this thought, what else does it make me think of? All right, so then I've got a connection. Um, and then where is that leading to? Is there a narrative that is now built with these two connections? And then mm -hmm. so I'll just build on the narrative. And then what will happen is I'll end up with like, um, a pile of scriptures that express an idea. And those ideas are just so beautiful to, to me because they're like, I'm realizing this is what I really think about when I get into this chain of thoughts because they're all they're all linked together. So it's like, when I get here, ah, I now have access to so much more happiness um, whenever I go to any of these thoughts because the whole idea together is beautiful and i imagine that that's some kind of sleep processing um to take your known information and um and connect it all together or at least maybe that's ni mm. i don't know it, it does trigger my emotions so i'm thinking there's got to be some fi in there i'll just be like oh crying because it's so beautiful but uh mm. yeah so you are you are not asking for permission you are giving yourself permission to enjoy the things you like mm. and uh, you are um, uh, giving yourself space for for that emotional part like where you connect your your um, the things you like like the scriptures you're mentioning and building on that and enjoying that like to yourself but, without even sharing it with with others like doing the sleep ah that's the problem i love to just share it with others too but <laughs> I, I i don't uh that's the play right anytime i do any amount of sleep obligated to guys look what i did uh so it's it's so it's so bad the peacocking of uh of but people love it they're like wow that's that's amazing mm. i was just gonna say that um Another thing uh, that I will do is when I catch myself being in an emotional state, right? Like I'm deeply emotional. The, the, the thinker says, get that out of there. But I'm telling myself when I'm experiencing emotion, hold that and mm -hmm. just embrace that. Can I go deeper? Can I feel even more emotion? And so I will actively try to stimulate my emotions even more whenever I get in a really emotional state so that I can... Um, be more comfortable experiencing really intense emotion uh because the problem is that previously right when i would experience really strong emotion it would be debilitating mm -hmm. but so so now it's like i figure if i am accustomed to experiencing intense emotion to the point where i can fully function while experiencing it it's uh that's really great and so that that's another thing i'm doing right so you're training yourself in that regard in a sense um yeah i i see that the time has been passing so i would <laughs> i think i have to move on but yeah that's interesting sure. the second question just uh, came back to me because you you talked about changes and i was just thinking of how we do it in op like we are tracking or we are triangulating we are kind of um, getting the outside feedback on our changes we are not just you know doing it objectively like measuring something uh what kind of feedback like over time how has it, how has it changed for you like the how feedback has... on yeah for example what you said before what you're doing now like playing and helping people and uh, and so on all right so you're saying how has the feedback changed yeah from the oh. outside world okay like, yeah, yeah how, how well, do people view you now compared to before like what do you hear amazing. them say <laughs> no it's uh, like i i feel like i am the most loved person i've ever met i feel like i'm more loved than than, than anyone people just will uh, like constantly just tell me how much they love me and show affection to me and just uh, like it, it never stops. It just it just it keeps coming. Of of everybody is mm -hmm. is just doing everything for me, and uh, you know, like like I can't. 
it, it's everything. Like like people will, yeah, people will do anything. They just will. They're constantly trying to um, spend more time with me. So is I'm so unbelievably busy. But it's like, um, I feel like when people are trying to take all of your time. Mm-hmm. That means that you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it, it means that your time is valuable. Mm-hmm. So, so people are like, "Man, that time is valuable." So, how can I get more of that in in my life? And so, um, when uh, what's happening is, I just I'm getting pulled in every direction. And so, I feel like that is a way to objectively see um, that you are benefiting people. Is everyone is trying to spend time with you? Yeah. Yeah, because earlier in some other interview, or if it was when we were talking, you shared that you were not very social growing up. So it seems like a very opposite version of you. Yeah, no, it's it's totally, totally different. Like, I mean, when I was young, it was just so bad. Like, again, I tell you, people would just say, oh, hey, Jake, what's up? And I'm like, just just stare at them, not even answer them. And it's it's horrible. Um, and then eventually when I started uh pioneering getting in the ministry uh more, it was like, all right, man, I have to talk to people. Uh so I've gotta figure this out. Um, and there was that. But then now it's like to a very but I was still weird, okay. I was still super weird. Nobody wanted to spend any time with me. Um my mom was like, Man, he doesn't have any friends uh so she was losing her mind i was like i'm cool i got video games but um you know it's it's just uh like i couldn't uh i wouldn't be able to like you know hold a conversation or you know give any value to anybody who i was with i i had nothing to offer so now that i'm at a point where uh i feel like a lot of people who talk to me get really good advice and they get really good um, encouragement uh, when they're with me. So it's like that I can see that on their on their faces and they will um, continue to reciprocate their affections. Uh, so it, it's a thoroughly enjoyable time like that. And I realize that also people tend to just like open up to me very much. Um, you know, people are, have no issues at all just sharing with me like, mm-hmm. man, this is the stuff. I'm going through because they know that all they're going to get from me is no judgment, but only just love and uh, support and possibly advice if they're TE. Mm. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> so, yeah. so what does your mom say today? If you compare. Oh, just everyone, everyone loves him. It's amazing. So her, she was like, Oh man, my prayers were answered in uh, like, I couldn't even begin to understand how, how much. Pulled the Ephesians three twenty on her. <laughs> mm, so you're very different today, what compared to what you were earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's just part of life. You know, we all we all become okay. Well, maybe this is a lie I'm telling myself from my feminine di, but I'm like, I figure, I figure we all become, you know, just better and better um, versions of ourselves. We're changing to become something more beautiful, but um, it's most certainly happened, and I get all the feedback for that yeah Mm -hmm. right okay interesting like the thoughts are everywhere all over the place like there are so many channel changes and my brain is trying to to i'm sorry no it's it's okay i mean this is what i'm doing i love listening to this chaos so that i can learn to consume and i can you know (laughs) just (laughs) see what what i think you know is interesting and so on um so yeah it's a good practice I'm just trying to wrap it up a little bit. So, yeah, what would you say is your goal from here now? Like, we have talked about all of these things already, but like more specifically when it comes to OP, like how do you plan to use, maybe you don't, but if you imagine it, how do you plan to use the code to become even better? Just more of what I'm already doing, you know, um, as I continue to try and, um, and be more in touch with the different, uh, aspects of it, like 
um, as I improve my my sleep, um, I will have a more refined uh, worldview, I believe, um, and also have just a better understanding of um, what the idea is that I want to share with people, not just like sharing a bunch of random stuff. But uh, as I as I get in touch with my OI, um, I will be able to continuously have a specific thing I'm trying to share. Uh, you know, because I feel like the the fastest uh, you, the fastest blast is just you get it from from um, nite. You know, so if I because it's just it's so narrowed with mm-hmm. the ni and and yeah. uh, and the t is just you know here's here's a very narrow generality, mm-hmm. um, and that's the answer. And so if I can really hone in on some ni, and just um the things that I because I've I've SE and consumed like mm-hmm. so much stuff. I have so much information. But how can I take all that and just here's the answer. That's what I want to really be able to do um in in the future is to have a, a very specific thought um that I'm going to be expressing in all my conversations because I'm trying to narrow down into the fundamental idea that is giving me so much joy. Mm. That is um, like, and I feel like, you know, I could explain it. I could explain, it's like, why are you so happy? People always ask me that. Why are you so happy all the time? Why are you so joyful? Mm. And it's like, I can explain that, but I'd love to explain that in like five words. Oh yeah, (laughs) yeah, right, right, yeah. And so- at any time it's like this right you ask me a question i'm going i'm going oh the channel changes like 20 times in the same sentence and it's like okay i kind of got that i would really love to just to just instantly blast out this is what's going on mm-hmm. yeah and if i if i can like continue to practice that and that's the whole thing about um ops is like because the the terms are specific patterns of behavior you can you can actually learn to um come with a way to train yourself in it in some manner so Mm -hmm. what i'm going to do right okay cool um i feel like we had a very nice conversation i really enjoyed getting to know you more jake and uh, your thoughts and experiences your se examples um i have a lot to process now i feel and my apologies to the audience that I didn't ask more ST specific questions. I didn't even ask you like, where are you at? You know, things like that. Ah, those things don't matter. <laughs> but they do to some extent, you know? Um, yeah. So my, my saviors are not always very practical. Um, but yeah, thank you for a great conversation regardless. And uh, I hope to talk to you soon again. Yeah, what a delight. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, thanks. Enjoy.